Our goal is to solve important spine and brain problems with a seamlessly implanted device. Once you have a computer in your brain, your eyeballs are video cameras. All of a sudden, every piece of information on the internet becomes accessible to our minds. This is the rat bot or the robo rat. It's got technology, it's got electrodes going into its left and right hemispheres. The scientists can make this creature go left, right. They have it running through mazes, controlling where it's going. They've now created an organic robot. You can solve everything from memory loss, hearing loss, blindness, paralysis, depression, insomnia, strokes, brain damage. These can all be solved with an implantable neural link. We will be able to transfer memories. Knowledge will be commoditized. All of us will be smarter. Most people don't really understand how this technology works, what data is collected, how it's stored, or who might be able to get access to it legally or illegally. The current world we are living in tends to become more and more technologized. Besides, it seems that, as it continually develops, technology gets closer and closer to our bodies. Think of the phone in your pocket, or the smartwatch on your wrist. Could you imagine it getting under your skin as well? Sweden one of the richest countries in technological advancement, has already inserted thousands of microchips into its citizens' hands. So congratulations, Hannah. Thank you. You've been chipped? Yes, I have. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm, I'm excited to see what I'll be able to do now. These devices are meant to help speed up users' daily rituals and help them connect with their household, offices, and gyms by simply swiping their hand against digital readers. I use it like to get around the building. Buy snacks. Yeah, exactly. So what I need to do is I need to first blip my chip, and it will log me in, mm -hmm. and from there I get access to the fridge. Also, these microchips can store emergency contact data, social media profiles, or e-tickets for various events within the territory of Sweden. While most people living in Sweden praise the idea of implanting microchips into their hands, Ben Liberton, a British scientist living in southern Sweden, thinks different. He believes that using your chip every time you want to do something, instead of using your card, can become a very easy way to share valuable personal information, especially that related to your physical health and bodily functions. The trained microbiologist who is now working in science communication also points out that as these microchips are inserted in the body, there is a certain layer of privacy to look out for before it starts to be widely used and shared. One might think that this is the peak of technological development, but the progress this field is making does not end here. The past 20 years have been focusing on the intense work of neuroscientists, which resulted in a revolutionary technology known as BrainGate. And the main goal is to connect the human brain to computers through BCIs, brain-computer interfaces, or BMIs, brain-machine interfaces. These brain chip implants are tiny processors that connect to your brain through threads that are significantly thinner than a human hair. In other words, as your brain is linked to a computer, all your data, such as memories or health information, will be continuously communicated back and forth. In a recent conference, tech mogul Elon Musk talked about his latest innovation, a brain chip implant that could allow people struggling with paralysis to use technology, like smartphones or robotic limbs, with just their thoughts. However, not only disabled people can use such brain chips, connecting a healthy human brain to a computer can help the individual to use its abilities to the fullest by enhancing senses, physical movement, and the ability to memorize. Could you imagine using Facebook without typing? Or maybe driving your Tesla with only the power of your mind? There are two sides of this, and the possibilities of implanting brain chips are both exciting and frightening. It is a matter of choosing how much we are willing to share of ourselves with a machine. It can be a real relief to communicate with others only through your thoughts. 
Sometimes, we can find it difficult to express what we're thinking about, so having others read our mind could be useful. Yet, would you sleep well at night knowing that others have the ability to access your mind? It can be really fascinating to control a light switch or to drive your car with just your mind, but would you feel comfortable knowing that others can control your thoughts? This may sound like a science fiction movie script, but things are evolving precisely towards this direction. Having the ability to access the human brain and to understand how it functions while connecting it to external devices can bring along numerous resources. It is especially useful for people dealing with severe neurological damages. Yet there are also several worrisome possibilities that are thought to cause harm. While the idea of having a perfect memory sounds really amazing, the fact that this perfect memory could be hacked sounds terrifying. Imagine that some of your most precious memories could be shared with other people. It's a sense of privacy that is being accessed, which can bring along numerous consequences, especially on a social level. These silicon chips, which interface with the human brain's neurons through contact points, are somehow trespassing nervous tissues and have a great potential to send us on a very dangerous path, according to scientist Greg Braden. Not only that inserting brain chips can be destructive because they can interfere with the normal functioning of neurological processes, it is also unnecessary. What these brain implants are thought to help us do, we already possess the biology to do it on our own. Mirror neurons are a specialized class of neurons in the human brain that don't know the difference between watching an experience and having the experience. This is why you can lie on your couch on a Sunday afternoon watching a soccer game or a golf tournament or whatever. You're lying down, but you're watching this and your heart's racing, your muscles are tense, you might be perspiring, you might be you know, breathing heavy, and, but you're just lying there. I mean, if you think about that, it makes no yeah. sense. Your mirror neurons think you're the one on the field because the brain doesn't know the difference between watching and having the experience. When we learn to access these mirror neurons in a very specific way, we have super learning. I do this personally. I mean, we can learn very, very quickly. We can learn music. You can learn to perform the way another musician is performing. You can learn a foreign language very quickly. You can retain, not only retain, but recall information. Super learning, super memory, super retention, super recall. Brain chip implants can indeed create numerous opportunities for the disabled, but for those of us who are healthy, there are several questions to answer. How safe are these devices? What are the long-term effects of having such a chip implanted into our brains? How much control do we have on how these brain chips function within our bodies? Human beings hold a great potential of accessing deeper layers of neurological functions, and so it becomes a concern as to how much of this power we are willing to give away to an external device. We are already developing into cyborgs because we are fully dependent on our devices. Anxiety levels go up whenever we are not near our phone, and it has become an important element of our existence. While we still have a certain amount of control on how a smartphone or a smartwatch can influence our lives, brain chips can open the door to another side of our existence, where privacy and the right to it are completely ignored. <laughs>